Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 in chapter 2 of our FPS RPG series. In this episode we're carrying on from where we left off and adding the ability to shoot our guns that we're setting up in our game. So let's go to our weapon parent first of all. And we've got start shooting and stop shooting. And on start shooting we're going to do first of all the fire bullet function. This is because we want it to do a, a fire bullet as soon as we pull that trigger. We don't want any delay on it, we want it to be immediate responsive to the player's input so fire bullet will do that for us then we can do a set timer by function the object it can be self and the function name is going to be fire bullet now the time is going to come from our fire rate so drag your fire rate over to the time slot there and hit compile Go over to fire rate and give it a value. I've given mine 0.1 and that means it will fire 10 bullets in every single second. On your set time by function node, tick the looping button to make sure it loops. And then on return value, we're going to store that as a variable. So promote to variable and we're going to store that as the firing timer. Now the reason why you want to do that is because this timer is spawned into the world, but we want to stop it from firing eventually. So to be able to do that, we need to get the reference to that particular timer, which is what this is. So then we call stop shooting. We can drag that firing timer variable out, choose get, and then from there, do clear and invalidate timer by handle. Okay, and that'll call the stop shooting for the gun. So that'll better handle the shooting part of, of the um, weapon side of things. Then we're going to go into the fire bullet function. So the fire bullet function is going to be a hit scan gun, so it's going to shoot out a line trace from the muzzle of the gun uh, to the center of the screen. So let's do a line trace by channel. And the starting position of this is going to be the muzzle uh, socket of the gun. So if you remember last time when we looked at the gun, you saw there was a muzzle socket at the end of the gun. So we can use that as a location point for when we start shooting. So let's drag a gun mesh out and then from there get socket uh, location and then type in muzzle as the name of the socket. So in all the other guns the muzzle uh, must be a socket in all the assets. Okay, So return value will go into the start point there. Now the end point is not going to be a straight line coming out from the gun. Okay, because that, although it's realistic, it doesn't look or play with, uh, correctly in a game. So, we'll use the camera instead. So, right click, get player camera, and get player camera manager. And this is the asset which is controlling what the camera, what the player is seeing at all times. So, we can drag this out and get the camera, and we can get the camera's location and rotation. So, let's get both of those. So, we've got location get rotation for both of those from the rotation side of things though we need to get the forward vector so get forward vector and that gives you the direction that the camera is facing in and then we're going to um, add that onto the location here so do add vector add those two together and into the end now, currently, the get forward vector is a normalized value, meaning it's a length of 1. So if we want it to go further than 1 unit, which we do, we need to multiply this by our range. So let's take a return value from the forward vector, multiply that by a float, and plug that result into the addition. Now, the range here we can just type in, or we can make a variable for it. So I'm going to click in the variable, call it range, make it a float. and by default, I'm going to set its value to 2000 and drag that on to the correct pin. Okay, so for testing purposes, we're going to change the draw debug type here to uh, duration and then hit compile. Okay, and that will do for now on Fire Bullet. Next, we're going to go onto the player character. And on the player character here, we're going to use our fire input. So right click fire. And we're going to drag in our first gun. Because we only want to shoot the first gun. And then from there, we're going to cast, sorry, get child. Actor. 
and I'll get the actual actor that is part of that component and then cast that to weapon parent plug that into pressed and then the success of that will come from here and start shooting and then from the as weapon parent pin again do stop shooting and pull that into the released so when we pull the trigger it will call start shooting and start the timer and when we call the released button we stop shooting and stop that timer so let's test that out and there you go you can see is now going to be shooting to the center of the screen perfectly okay and you can see because i set that timer to be 0 0.1 it's now firing 10 bullets every single second now at the moment it's super accurate okay so what we're going to do in the next part is add the accuracy factor to this weapon so that when we are shooting the longer we shoot the more less accurate it is we actually use the accuracy uh, variable that we set up prior and we'll go into the act of when you're crouching um, that'll have an effect on your accuracy as well so join us in the next part when we work on accuracy you can watch that part right now over on patreon.com forward slash ryan daily where a donation of just one dollar will get access to that video plus many others big thank you to all of my patrons and youtube members for their continued support and uh, this channel will not be able to run without you guys so thank you again so much if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future content, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next part. Bye bye.